Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? You asking me or Bob? Well, I'm asking the both of you. Okay. Oh, you first. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think you want to start with me first. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Me? I, yeah. I just got a letter from the IRS. Oh. Well, why? Because they have not processed my last year's tax uh, uh, thing. So basically, I have, a, I have a dollar's credit with the IRS, and they tell me that I have got to do something about it. Wow. And they have it. <laughs> or I will lose the credit. I will lose the, the money. The dollar? Well, oh, yeah. instead of a million dollars. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would want my dollar back from them. I would too. I, yeah. Well, actually, actually, I want them to keep it so that my last year's tax paid. Mm -hmm. They acknowledge that they're paid. Okay. And then I did file my tax return on time. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a, a lot of things like that going on. I think they announced it on the news. Yeah, they did. However, why is it my fault? It's yeah. not, but they want to blame you and you just a tax paying citizen. I'm, that, I'm just a poor slob out there just trying to keep my my life in order. Yeah. Good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that's why I didn't have a lot to say this morning so far. Cause, yeah, it's okay. It's all, it's all gonna pass. Well, actually, it's not. Oh. Um, yeah, and you know, we're gonna talk about that as soon as we get a few people here. Okay, uh, I have a question, Charles. Yeah. Um, I started a painting last night. And I was unhappy with it. Do you go through that? Yes. Okay. Me too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, uh, well, okay. It kind of goes something like this. <laughs> you have a great idea. You get inspired. Yeah. You, know? you run into the studio. You grab a canvas or a piece of paper or something and you start in trying to get something on the page that looked something like what you had in your mind. And, you know, you're excited about it and, and you're kind of working on it and it's like a couple of hours into it, you're kind of disappointed because yeah. it's not moving in the direction you think you want to see it going. Okay. Um, you know, and all, all paintings go through this phase where they're kind of ugly, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> and it's kind of a mess. And it's kind of, and, you know, all I can tell you about it is it's kind of part of the process. And it's okay. just, you just got to kind of keep at it, work at it a little bit. I, I've, I've learned something about that being. The second, the, the first phase is that, hey, this isn't too bad. Second phase is, eh, I'm not so sure. Third phase is, I'm a terrible artist. The fourth phase is, well, maybe it's coming around. And <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what I go through. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's a lot of back and forth, you know. I mean, you know, they made a whole movie about it. It's called The Agony and the Ecstasy. It's that way for every artist. You know, okay. uh, and it's, it is, it's a struggle. It, it's always a struggle because it, your vision oftentimes exceeds your ability to convey. <laughs> yeah. Know, More than once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you know, to really convey, convey, you know, what your mind can see. And, um, and, and, it, and it is, and you just have to keep working at it. Okay. I, I just wondered, you know, because I know I'm very new at this, 
and I, I was just like, oh, this is not going in the direction. The colors look muddy. I, I got, I'm going to let it dry and start again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, and, there, there's another there's another expression that I use, and that says my my mind is ca writing checks that my body can't cash. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wasn't going to go down that path, but uh, I was going to. And actually, there's there's people here who I know have heard this before, but you know, my standard answer to your question is it's just paint. You can always put more paint on. Yeah. Yeah. Or start over. Well, it's, it's, you know. <laughs> I mean, you're, you know, I, I don't know that you would scrap it and start all over, you know, just keep, you know, keep working at it, you know, and, you know, work at it. If you get frustrated with it, you know, there's probably a good time to walk away, you know, and let it sit yeah. for a while, decide what you want to do, you know, and maybe, and, and believe me, I get like this, you know, all the time, you know, you get to a certain point with a painting and you kind of get to a point and it's like you don't know quite how you want to resolve it. Right. And sometimes the best thing to do is put it down, put it aside, go do something else, walk away from it for a little while until you kind of have in your mind where you want to go with it. You know, okay. that or or the or you have the energy that you want to get back in there and fight with it some more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I, I think, you know, I'm going to let it dry. The sky looks good. I, I'm doing really well with my skies, but the rest of the landscape part, I'm still working on that, that aspect. Okay. So yeah. I'll put it to the side and go to another canvas and do something else and yeah. then come back. And you know what you might do, you know, if, if it's a, a matter of, well, I just don't quite know what I want to do here. How big is it? It's a 12 by 12. It's not that big. Okay. So then get you a piece of paper out. Okay. Are you working in acrylics or are you working in oil? Oil. Oil. Okay. Well, use something other than oil. I have colored pencils and watercolor pencils. I have other mediums that I could yeah. work with. Yeah. But get, get you, you, like in your sketch pad, something like that. You know, if it's okay. a square format, you know, draw you about four or five squares on a page and then, okay. you know, work on the landscape. What do I, what do I want down there? Just, but very small, you know, if okay. it's by okay. five, work like three by three, Okay. you know, and just real rough, you know, just kind of until you kind of come up with something that, you know, you like, you know, that you're interested in, um, you know, and do some thumbnails, you know, kind of work it out. Okay. I'll do that. Yeah. You know, and Charles, then, I have, oh, when you get finished, I have a question too about older paintings because I have not painted for two and a half years. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so what I am reading about older paintings? Oh, I can swing around here and. Yeah, I mean, is it a general question about older paintings or is it about specifically something? Yeah, just going back and now that I I have more skills than when I did those, at least I hope I do, yeah. that um, I can make them better, improve them in some way. Or should I just back off and do something else? Okay, let me ask you this. Okay, it, it, my answer will depend on two things. Okay, at the time when you did them, did you consider them finished? I considered them ready, you know, to, uh, it was acceptable. That's not a clear I'm done. Okay. Yes, I know. And one of them was the three, it was the picture of me and um, my daughter Kelly and my niece sitting around a table at a Christmas back in many, many years oh, yeah. ago. Yeah, I remember that one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 I keep looking at it because now it's in my den and I go, gosh, you know, this needs to have this and, you know, it could be improved a lot. And then the flat one, 
which was made of Kelly holding her cat in some kind of lobster outfit, which the cat yeah. was not happy about. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that one too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I so could make that not so flat. You could. You could. Okay. Now here's my answer. And you may like it, you may not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Having your work around you, it's always going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Always. Good, bad, or otherwise, huh? Good, bad, or otherwise. You know, it's like every time you walk by it, it's going to be whispering in your ear. <laughs> Come over here. You could fix this. You know, you could do this. You could do that. That's or wonderful. it's like, um, you know, I could... If I could just get in there, you know, I think I could improve it. Right. And the fact is, okay, that you could look at it from the standpoint of, you know, you could keep working on this painting forever. Mm -hmm. And the reason you could keep working on paintings forever is because six months from now, you're not going to be the same person you are today. No. You're going to know more. You're going to maybe feel differently. You're going to have a different slight angle about the subject that you painted. And, you know, the problem with that is you'll never get done with more than two or three paintings in your whole life because you'll keep working on them forever. So at, at some point, point you got to say time out and this one's finished. Yeah. Yeah. At some point it's time to be done. And you have to kind of view it in the standpoint that, okay, this is, as, this is as well as I could have done for the time, then. you know, that I did it and I need to move on. Okay. Okay. Now that doesn't mean, that you have to move on from the subject or from the conversation. And I have gone back and revisited and repainted paintings many, many times. Um, you know, trying to bring to that painting what I know at that time. You know, because you keep growing, you know. And rather than just keep going back in, picking at the same painting, slaving over it, you know, sometimes it's, it's like, okay, that's what I did two years ago. I don't need to mess with it anymore. I really need to, you know, if, I, if I'm really interested in that subject, you know, maybe I need to go back and redo it. You know, and if I did, what would I do differently? You know, how would I make it better? You know, or how would right. I reflect how I feel about that subject, you know, now. Yeah. Right, uh, right. I understand. I have, have done the boathouse in Sweden, which was a picture Kelly brought back when she was over there for three years. And I, I knew when we visited, the light was so spectacular during the summer. It's just different. It's a different angle, different light. So uh, I have painted that one at two or three times. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and you know, it's like each time. You know, even if you stay with the same composition, you know, the way you apply the paint, there's, you know, it's like each time that you do it, you know, kind of another aspect of who you are as an artist shows up on the canvas. Hmm. Okay. Mary, well, thank you. I don't want to go off on a tangent. Let somebody else talk. No, I think, I think that's that very important. You're not the same person you were five years ago, two years ago, one year ago. You have learned a lot more. And I think Charles' words are very well put. Yes, we all keep learning and growing, hopefully. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, then guess what? You're dead. <laughs> you know, pretty much. I'm sorry, not me. Not you? 
No, I'm going back to my childhood. Oh, well, okay. You know, Armando, I hate to tell you yes. this, you're not alone. We're all going back to our childhoods. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and in, and in a way, you know, I'm I'm kind of instigating, you know, the whole idea that we all do need to go back to our childhoods, you know, because we lost something along the way, you know, becoming adults. Uh, we, we, you know, we forgot how to play and, mm -hmm. um, and look at the world, you know, a little bit more lightheartedly. And, um, and that's, that's a lesson, you know, that that's an important one to hold on to, you know, so. Are there yeah. any exercises on how to go back to our playfulness and get it into something on Canvas? Yes, experiment. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm serious. I mean, you know, um, like I was talking to Veronica, you know, just a little bit ago, and she was not happy with something she's working on. And so set it aside. You know, um, you know, you don't have to take on the whole world. And you don't have to paint the painting at the full size. You know, do some little thumbnails, play, experiment, mm -hmm. try different colors. You know, um, you know, do do weird and crazy stuff that you wouldn't risk doing on the actual canvas itself, and see what comes out of it. You know, you might get something that you're really excited about. You know, and then you know, try to apply it. So, okay. Anyway, um, okay, so we got about 11 of us here. Let's see who's here, okay? Because I, I don't get to see everybody all at once, but um, I'm gonna do something about that. I'm gonna put it on gallery view for a minute, okay? So we got Naomi, Ilan, Jenny is here, uh, Elsie's here, Veronica, Bob, Lady made it. Yay, Lady, it's good to see you again. Oh, Lady, back. Boom. Yes. Hello, everyone. How are, how are you guys doing? Good, and you? Hi, how are you? I'm looking good every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, so I've got something to say to kind of the group. Unfortunately, not everybody is here. Um, but I've tried to address this issue on a couple of different occasions now. Hopefully this is the last time I have to ever talk about it again. Um, I sent out an email and uh, I want to apologize to everybody. And I just sent out another email basically saying that. Um, Don't find me. You know, uh, basically I, I did a boo-boo, okay? In the sense that, you know, I, I sent the email out um you know as just a general email and it listed everyone's address on there and some people are using that to keep this conversation going uh that i have asked either they take offline and do it individually or whatever but they keep going back and forth uh on it um you know which is unfortunate you know, so, you know, A, uh, you know, the powers of B have already had a conversation with me <laughs> because by the way, you know, this email, you know, it's a county email that I'm sending out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You guys are not the only ones who see yep. it. Okay. Yep. It, it goes other places. Other people do see it. Okay. And they have. And they're very unhappy. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, with me, you know, and and rightly so. You know, it's my fault. Uh, I should have done a blind, you know, copy. Um, I admit my mistake, and I will be more cognitive of that in the future. Okay. Um, you know, unfortunately, we have to deal with what's going on now. And so, uh, you know, my request is, you know, if you guys want to talk to each other, you know, I don't have a problem with it. You know, if, if you want to talk about anything, I'm willing to give you, you know, time to talk about it, express yourself. Uh, but, you know, this, this replying all and sending stuff out to everybody, it's got to stop. 
Okay. So, and unfortunately, I mean, you know, the people who are, you know, doing it, unfortunately are not here, <laughs> you know. Right. Yeah. So, so we will see, you know, how all of that plays out. But, uh, yeah. I'm still unclear vote. on what happened. You got my vote, Charles. Yeah, my vote too, Charles. Right. Mine too. Well, what happened was, you know, basically, you know, we have conversations, you know, in this class all the time, you know, and, and you know, look, you know, we're talking about art. And artists create pieces of art many times about social commentary or about subjects that, you know, uh, are sometimes uncomfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, some people want to kind of chime in with maybe their experience and that's fine. Um, you know, maybe somebody, you know, disagrees with the viewpoint of it, something like that. That's fine too. Okay. But, uh, you know, but a conversation is fine. But, you know, when we start having that conversation, we need to be cognitive of the fact that we can't dominate, you know, the whole meeting. You know, we can't just talk endlessly. We have to be respectful of people when somebody has something to say. We need to give them the space to say it, you know, to respond. You know, and so as long as it's a respectful, you know, dialogue between people, I don't have a problem with it. You know, when we start arguing and talking over each other, you know, that's, you know, that doesn't get anybody anywhere. Okay. Nope. And, uh, would, and would it help? I think we have a hand we can raise. Yeah. If we have something to say. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I've again, <laughs> and this is probably my fault. I probably need to learn how, I probably need to take a course on how to actually run a Zoom class. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've, we've kind of learned uh, it as we've gone along. Um, you do fine. Yeah, well. Yeah, I, I have enjoyed yours so far up until whatever happened happened. And I have had workmen here yeah. for over a week. So I'm in and out, in and out, in and out. And I just lost what happened. Yeah. Well, you know, the conversation within the group itself is fine. Okay. It's when I send out the email, you know, I will, I guess the way that I would describe it, is that a couple of people took it upon themselves to hijack that email and then used it as a platform to keep, you know, keep the argument going. And it wasn't necessary, you know. And the was, argument was, was what? Oh, about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you know? Okay, I, 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 the question I remember you asking was what we had gotten out of the video yeah. about the female painter and I remember saying that, uh, wow, that really gave me a whole different view of the French Revolution. Yeah. But, from yeah, the more yeah. of the monarchy and their, their group than from uh, how I had previously looked at it. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, yeah, the emails had nothing to do with that. They had really nothing to do okay. with that. And, uh, and that's why I was saying it's, it, it kind of got into a lot of inappropriate stuff that, you know, it wasn't, okay. it wasn't the venue to do it. You know, I mean, I'm not discouraging people having conversations like that. Those can actually be very enlightening and helpful to other people, <laughs> you know, to, to all parties. But, you know, to use a county email, you know, and a class list and reply all to everybody so that everybody is kind of involved. Yeah, that just wasn't really appropriate and it wasn't what I intended. And so I do apologize to everybody for that. You know, like I said, that was my mistake and, uh, and I won't do that again. <laughs> you know? I promise you, I will not do that again. Okay. Uh, you will not see other people's email addresses up there when you get an email from me anymore because it will all be blind copy. Okay. Thank you. So, I, want to, I wanted to tell you something, Chuck. It's about art. Yeah, what about art? 
I sent you, uh, I don't know, you noticed that, that I sent you a, 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 a picture of a paint. I did. I saw that, yeah. and, and I had a question for you about that. Yeah. Well, many years ago, somebody gave me a poster, and I framed it. But when I framed it, I cut the bottom where the plane who uh, in front of one of those museums in New York. And on the bottom say who painted, I know it's an American uh, artist. And I, I just want to know who made that painting. Well, I was Maybe wondering, I, I was kind of wondering <laughs> that myself. Uh, oh. Yeah, I mean, I would have to go back and do some research, you know, and figure oh, out okay. who painted I it. I threw away the information. I had it, but I don't know what I did with it. So. That's what, and uh, today I send you some pictures about some people that up north they do kind of sculpture with the snow. If you consider that art, so tomorrow you will tell us about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow is kind of the, sh you know, the critique and share thing, and and so we'll uh -huh. be doing that. Okay. Anyway, right. thank you. All right. So uh, anyway, that's all I've got to say. Um, if, if we're all open to the idea, I'm gonna jump into, we have two different shows to look at. Uh, we have, mm -hmm. they're both at the Cod Marietta Museum. Uh, one is their permanent collection of still life, which is really actually a very good show. And I would have never known that they had the caliber of art, you know, in their permanent collection that they do uh, within that category. And the other, which is the one that I'm going to start with, which is a show of Hispanic artists uh, who live throughout the Southeast United States. Um, so they're all in this country, but they all originated and came from, you know, Mexico and Central America and South America. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I pointed out to somebody in an email, <laughs> um, you know, the Hispanic community is really pretty diverse, you know? Um, you know, you have people who are, you know, really wide, you know, range of people in ethnicity there. Um, you know, and a lot of the, the people who live in South America, you know, their ancestors, a lot of them originated in Africa, you know? So you've, you've got, you know, uh, black Hispanics, you've got white Hispanics, indigenous Hispanics, um, you know, and so, you know, it's a very diverse group, you know, and I can't, I, I don't know all of these artists, you know, we get a little bit about their name, their technique and things like that. I don't know exactly what category they fall into, you know, but somebody was concerned about that. So I tried to address that with them, <clears throat> but, uh, but the work itself, I think you're going to be amazed at, you know, because there's some really, really nice stuff here. And uh, so I'm going to start sharing that with you and uh, we'll go through it. And uh, so hopefully you have a cup of coffee, you know, something, sit back, you know, take a look at the work. Uh, the way this is going to work is you're going to see a, an image of the work and then we're going to go to the card, you know, that was next to the work, which will give you the artist's name, the technique, and it generally has like a statement about the piece, you know, kind of what it's about or why, you know, why they did it. And uh, we'll try to take enough time to go through each one. So a little of all of, a little of all of that. There we go. I have to talk. <laughs> Sorry about that. All right, so that's the be still. Yeah, this is the one we want. Okay. So, let me uh, make it bigger on the screen so we can see what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, everybody see like a, a big, you know, 500 euro? Yes. Looks like a yes. money? Yes. 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 150, then, yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, so let me assure you, this is not a piece of money. Uh, it is, in fact, a very, very large um, piece of plexiglass. And um, what, and we kind of talked about this yesterday with the parchment piece. 
Uh, all of this is actually printed on the reverse side of this. Now, this particular artist uses a digital process. And uh, so it's uh, Maria Fernanda Larey. Okay, anyway, she's in Florida. And um, okay, so the, you know, basically it's a printing process uh, and it's on plexiglass. It's on the reverse side. Um, anyway, she's doing people are, are pieces that kind of reflect currency. Um, and so, you know, she's one of those artists who, you know, they're beginning to talk about, you know, socioeconomic issues uh, and kind of how the world is changing around us. And so if you go back and look at the piece itself, you know, it, it's not just a straight copy of a European Euro. It's, uh, you know, she, she's made kind of a collage out of different bills, you know, and, uh, and kind of pieced it all together. And when you look at this, you know, really closely, you know, the thing I noticed about it is you could tell that it was an actual printed piece um, because when you get real close to it, it's very much so digitized and you can kind of begin to see the pixelation you know, in the printing itself. You know, so this is from the file that you did this from, you know, it's, it's you know, enlarged quite a bit. So. Charles, did it say the size of the, the work on the card? Uh, it did not, but uh, this is probably about six to eight feet long. Wow. Wow, that's huge. Yeah, no, I'm, yeah, this is no small piece of work. <laughs> you know, you can't miss it when you walk into the museum because it's, it's about at least six feet, you know, minimum. Um, so it's really about six by three, maybe six, you know, something like that. And she's got several of these in the show. Well, two, you know, that I can remember right offhand. Um, but they are, they're really quite large. And, uh, you know, certainly the color, you know, stops you and, and gets your attention. Uh, Cause mm -hmm. the colors are really vibrant and stuff. Now, you know, different people have different, different viewpoints <laughs> on digital art. You know, some people, you know, it's like, well, that's not really art because you're doing it on a computer and all yada, yada, yada. And, you know, we can get into the semantics of that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, working on a computer, creating a piece of artwork, you know, it's, it, again, it's just a tool, you know, it will help you, you know, you know, base, basically, you know, put things together. It's not going to come up with an idea. It's not going to come up with a composition. It's not going to decide all of the color combinations and things for you. You know, as an artist, you still have to make those decisions, whether you're working on a computer or whether you're working with, you know, a brush and paint your hand. So, uh, you know, that's my viewpoint, you know, it may, may work for you. It may not. So, but, uh, you know, so I'm going to move on here to the next piece. Okay. Now this is a painting. Um, it's a medium sized painting, you know, but it's in, I believe it's in oil and, uh, you know, it's a bit surreal. You know, it kind of reminds me a little bit of Salvador Dali's work. Um, you know, the painting technique, in some places, you know, it's very well handled and very smooth and very finished. You know, other parts of the painting are very textural and rough. Um, you know, and that was the artist's intention, you know, the create, creating contrast and things. And, uh, so Carlos Solis is his name. He's local. He's here in Kennesaw. And the name of the painting is, you know, Negro Primo, Primero. Um, and so he came from Venezuela. Let's see what else can we... Uh, okay, so it's about a particular individual. You know, Pedro... Is it Cameo? Is that correct? 
for those of you who speak Spanish. Um, From Bejo, yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, by incorporating optical effects and playing with visual perception. Okay, um, so here, let's go back and look at the painting. And uh, supposedly the face here, you know, incorporates, you know, different scenes from the battle. So, okay, I see a horse, I see a guy who looks like he's, you know, falling or whatever. And, and yeah, so that kind of makes up, you know, the larger face here. Um, you know, it's an interesting idea. Anybody got anything to say about it? Yeah. Like it, don't like it. Is it is it supposed to be like a dream he's having? Is the person in front dreaming that behind him? Well, I think the person in front is wounded. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of a surreal right. approach, you know. Um, and so yeah, it's it's kind of this question of you know. Is is this something I'm imagining? Is this reality? You know, it kind of goes back and forth a little bit. Yeah. It's is, a nice the, is, is the figure behind the man that's in the front in the yellow and um, red jacket, is that supposed to be an angel? Um, hmm, that's a good oh, question. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have thought that at first, but then, yeah, I kind of see. Yeah. I wonder what you know what that is. It's it's kind of like wings, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So I mean, you know, the more you look at this, you know, the more you can kind of pick up, you know, different things going on in the composition itself. And what what uh, war or revolution or whatever was this? This was in eight point eighteen sixteen. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen sixteen. Yeah. Um. In Venezuela? Well, it was a, yeah, it was a war of independence in Venezuela. Yeah, I have no no history. I'll have to study that. I think it's a powerful painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, you know, I, I, the more I look at it, you know, the more it really reminds me of like Salvador Dali's work. You know, mm -hmm. you know, Especially at, on the forehead where, uh, there is a guy with a cannon head mm -hmm. holding the wheel, I guess, of the cannon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, this, you know, this is a tree which makes sort of the ear and the side of the face, you know, that, that's, that we're seeing along with the horse and the falling soldier in the background. So, so yeah, he's, you know, there's a lot of layers to this and, uh, it's one of those things you you would have to look at, you know, for a long period of time. And, you know, there's more and more stuff that you can read into it. Yeah. And now that, you know, this is blown up, really kind of looking at it, it does kind of look like an angelic fi figure, doesn't it? So, it does. Yeah, it does, yes. Yeah. 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 Good eye. Yeah, I just very came good on. eye. I just came on. Who is this artist? Oh, um... Carlos Solis is his name. Carlos Solis. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. What we're looking at, uh, Wanda, is the yeah. uh, kind of Hispanic community show at mm -hmm. the Cobb Marietta Museum. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, and then here's this piece. Now, there's a lot well, going on in here. Yeah, well, this is this is one of those pieces that you just got to keep looking at for a little bit. And it's like the more you look at it, the more stuff is more you see. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's all kinds of things going on. Um, and the, is this the same artist, Charles? No, this is this is a different artist. Uh, this is, let's see who, who it is. Uh, Mario. 
Pardon? When was this at the museum? It's there now. <laughs> oh, it's there now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I shot all of these uh, Saturday, this last Saturday, and I went through both shows. Uh, cool. So this, this is acrylic on canvas. Mm. Now, the thing that I was kind of impressed with is, you know, in looking at this piece, is there's another artist whose work I've seen before and I like a lot. And, um, and, and they both have a very similar look and approach to their work, except this artist is working in acrylic and they're using or integrating representational images into the piece. The other artist is totally abstract and using oil. Uh, but again, the paintings look very much alike, <laughs> you know, when you, when you start really looking at them. Um, you know, so I, th I thought that was really interesting. And let's see, where is he from? Is he, I don't know whether he's... Pennsylvania, Allentown. He's in uh, Allentown, PA. So, so yeah, he's not local. Um, but... In working with that particular medium, you know, acrylic, uh, you know, he's getting a lot of effects that you would sort of expect to see with oil paint. You know, it's got this kind of blended, soft, kind of fluid feel in a lot of those areas. Um, uh, I, so I, don't, that, I don't know that I want to work that hard. <laughs> looking for the painting when I, when I go to the show. <laughs> yeah. Charles, is this a is this a, th a three or four color palette? Red, black, and white. Gray. Yeah, no. but yeah he, I, he uses mm -hmm. a range of color, but it's it's mm -hmm. all very subdued. Um, you know, you can see violets and greens and blues and you know, yeah. But they're very mm -hmm. subtle. And you know, Must be. the okay. eyeballs yeah. that he drew, they're all like cat eyes, like animal eyes. The, all the cat, all the eyes that he drew in here. What he eyes? Little, the, yeah. you know, those two <laughs> eyes, it's like on that fence. There's two eyes like, like on that oh, fence. Oh, wow, okay. And then above that, to the left, there's a, 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 another eye. Mm -hmm. well, they all got, have that little thin pupil in them. Yeah, well, he's got a, a person's face here. And yeah, yeah um, I see so much movement in that piece. It looks like uh, the gentleman's mm -hmm. head is like a a hood ornament on a locomotive. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's what I see. I see his head. Right. Like a <laughs> right. <laughs> I guess you can interpret it that way. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. It, and it's just moving so fast to me. It's just like. It's it's hard to even focus on it because I just see so much movement, the wheels of the train and everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of layers. Uh, getting back to what Bob was saying, you know, um, you know whether or not you would want to engage and, and work that hard on a piece. You know. Um, you know, I would say that, yeah, he, he put in a fair amount of work on this. Um, you know, I don't think it all happened accidentally. And it, it was not something that uh, was probably quick and easy for him to do. Because there's a lot of subtlety in this piece. Um, now, what I can tell you about it in looking at it when I was there, um, a lot of this stuff, like for example, you see this piece right here? It's kind of textural, right? Yeah. And it looks like old paint that had dried up, you know, on something. And um, what I'm, and this is speculation on my part. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think that paint was originally on this surface. Um, you know, he has collaged pieces. You know, he's, he's done pieces like this and put it on glass or something like that and then wet it, lift it, uh, and then added it 
you know, and adhered it back down onto the surface to build up layers of paint uh, that have this sort of cracked and, and you know, textural type surface on it. Um, what I think what Wanda was reading as an eye, if you really begin to look at that, you know, this is kind of scratched around it. You know, it's actually cut or carved into the layer of paint. And so it kind of creates almost like the outline, like an eyelid or something. And with that little, that little highlight in there or whatever, it, it looks a lot like an eye. Classy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, whether it was intended to be an eye or not, I don't know. Um, it could be. And to the, to the right, um, to the right, it almost looks like there's a little bead line. You know, I noticed that when I noticed the eye. Uh, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. It looks like a what? Say that again. A bead. A bead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, like you got yeah. the eyes of the bee and the wings back here. Oh, yeah. oh yes, I, I see, see that. that now. Okay. I didn't see it before. Thank you for showing me that. Yeah. <laughs> so whether much to see in this painting. Yeah. Now again, you know, whether it's a bee or not, you know, that's total speculation. You know, we it's it's what we're seeing, you know, in this person. Right. Whether they yeah. ever it's a Rorschach. <laughs> it's a Rorschach test. Or yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Charles, uh, do you know what the call was, what they were looking for to uh, when they, they sent out requests for people to, to submit work? Yeah, these, these were basically artists who are members of the Hispanic community. And the community, yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, where they put the call out exactly, I don't know. Uh, obviously, they, they didn't send the email to me, you know. Uh, I'm surprised Maria didn't get one, but okay. Um, it was three or four years <laughs> ago, the Marietta Museum did a, a Hispanic collection that was fabulous also. Yeah. So I do want to get down and see this. This looks like equally fabulous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I saw that first show and, and yeah, it was. It was a beautiful show. This? Yeah. Way better. <laughs> Really? I, and, yeah, and and the thing is, you know, there are some of the artists that were in that show uh, that are in the show as well, you know, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, this, this has a much broader range of work and diversity in it, <coughs> you know, as far as cool. approaches and types, like this piece right here, which, you know, I mean, if, if you look at the painting technically, it's really beautifully done. Um, let's look at who, so it's uh, Dora Lopez. She's local, she's in Marietta. Uh, came from Peru, third class, you know, so she studied, you know, um, you know, in Peru. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of a collage piece. Um, you know, it's painted, but you know, she's, you know, she puts pieces of fabric, you know, in, in her painting itself. Oh. And then you begin to I like that. You know, zoom in. You know, she's really mm -hmm. using a lot of yeah, techniques. Um, and I think this is acrylic, right? Yeah, acrylic. Oh, wait a minute, no. That's the wrong one. Oh, yes. Uh, mixed media. Marigo. Dora Lopez. Okay. Um, yeah. But when you, you, yeah. Okay. That was interesting. Um, but when you look at how she's using the paint, <coughs> now I'm guessing, okay. And again, this is guess because I really don't know. But this to me looks and feels more like oil paint than it does acrylic. Yeah. Um, but it could it's be beautiful. beautiful. Um, you say you know, that, Charles? Well, a lot of this paint is kind of transparent and thin, uh, mm -hmm. and it looks washed on, but it looks very controlled, like it wasn't really, really wet. And, you know, to be able to do that, you know, oil 
you can work very thin layers of oil like that and, uh, and push it around. You, you don't get that same nice smooth transition okay. in acrylic. Oh, and so, so you know, these very thin layers, you know, versus the real kind of direct <laughs> and, the, and the more opaque layers, to me, it just kind of feels more like the body of oil paint than it does, you know, acrylic. Again, I could be wrong. I, you know, I don't know, but I'm, I'm kind of just speculating there. But they've, they've got a mixture of, like, metallic paint with you know, regular artist colors. And then, um, and then you can see, you know, pieces of gauze that have been, you know, adhered to the surface and then, you know, had color added over it. Are the strips that are behind the model piece, long pieces of cloth? Well, they're like gauze, you know, almost like a bandage mm -hmm. and they've been actually adhered to the surface you know whether they were I would suspect that they were adhered after she had the figure in place and then painted you know and then painted over now whether she had the the model painted at the time she may not have she just may have had it drawn in and then put down you know the gauze and adhered it in a layer, you know, and, and and then did the final painting all at once because the color, you know, she's, you know, kind of matched. And so I'm guessing, you know, when she painted the figure, she painted over the gauze as well, you know, add the color. And, uh, and again, you know, this being a mixed media piece, you know, she could have used like a, a graphite or a charcoal drawing, you know, fixed that onto the canvas, used acrylic, like matte medium or something and put down the gauze and then did the final layer of color and things in the oil paint over all of that. So, so there's probably several okay. different types of paint on here, but I'd say it's predominantly feels like oil. When you mentioned about it looking like uh, it was rubbed on or something, I was watching a video the other day where this artist was doing a season <laughs> of rocks and water, the ocean coming up on it. And what he did was he took uh, some black oil and dabbed it on a rag and rubbed it on the canvas in the shape of the rocks. And then he mm -hmm. took another rag and wiped off the oil to give the effect of the rigged, you know, the, the raggedness of the rocks. And then mm -hmm. he began to paint. It was really interesting to see somebody yeah. rub off the paint to make the design. Right. Yeah, it's, well, yeah. And with, with oil, there's a lot of different techniques like that. They, they call it a lift mm -hmm. out. Okay. Um, we've talked about that before where you do your drawing in kind of a lineal way. Um, where you do the outlines of things and then you fix that and then you'll paint, you know, like a layer of oil paint that's relatively thin, right? And, and translucent, not totally transparent, um, which will cover the whole canvas and then you'll take a brush and you'll lift out the light areas, you know, um, you know, and, and, even though you've put that layer of oil paint over it, that drawing is still there. So you can still see the outlines and the shapes that you mm -hmm. initially put down. Mm -hmm. yeah. So again, you know, it becomes a lot like this yeah. approach where it's a big <laughs> idea. And, and there's, you know, they're, they're going through different processes and different stages of building up the painting, you know, at that point. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. A lot of, you know, a lot of flexibility. Um, next piece. Now, this is actually done on a piece of silk fabric. And, mm. Yeah. Oh, wow, interesting. Now, at the Benson Center, we had a, a class in silk painting. Yes, I took lots of them. Right. And, you know, probably very similar in approach and technique. You know, different, totally different feel. Now, 
this piece of silk is probably about three to four feet wide. So it's not small. Uh -oh. you know, okay. It's fairly good size. Three four feet wide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, well, very, small. No, not, mm -hmm. not small at all. You know, it's pretty good size. Yeah. And expensive. <laughs> yeah. I bet. <laughs> But as you can see, you know, it's, it's got sort of that, you know, uh, it has kind of a, a Hispanic feel, you know, to the way that he's treated the face. Um, you know, this almost looks like Mayan or Aztec. No, I was going to say that to me, it's very Mayan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, who is this? Well... This artist's name is Pablo Cavitas. Cavitas. I don't know. Caviadas. Caviadas. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it's it's you know it's Obama, you know it's Obama's portrait on the right. Back. You know now when I looked at the the face the figure, you know. It didn't strike me as Obama. No, I, I, I was either, totally no. blown away when you said that. Yeah. Yeah. But now But now I can see it. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, the yeah. more I look at it, you know, the more it begins to look kind of yeah, like Obama. It does. Maybe it's the power of suggestion. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that that was well, important. Uh, maybe the uh instead of it being Mayan, maybe it's more Hawaiian. Well, well, he's from Ecuador, so it should be Inca. Uh, In Inca influence, maybe, but I, I've been to Mexico, to the Mayan, the Aztec, Toltec ruins, to some of, some of the Aztec and Toltec, but uh, and to the archaeological museum there, and I've been to Machu Picchu, but there weren't as many Inca relics that around Peru as there were uh, Mayan. This doesn't actually look Mayan. No. But it, it's hard to tell what yeah. the influence is. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, I mean, growing up, you know, in California, there was you uh -huh. know, a very large Chicano community there, you know, right. who, who identified themselves as, you know, Chicano. And this was not an unusual approach to, you know, a lot of their, you know, portraits and figure of art. And that's kind of what it reminded me of at first. It's very cool. Yeah. You know, it's very clever. And, you, so, and to put yeah. that on silk. Yep. That's absolutely yeah. awesome. But when this was oh. painted, was, was it stretched on, on a, uh, some kind of a board and then loosened up again or? Okay. Yeah, usually uh, what you do is to take the silk and stretch it on on uh, yeah, kind of like on uh, bars. Yeah, like and you bars. and you have pens that pull and, and it's pretty taut all the way around. So then you've got to set it up about I don't know at at least three inches to six inches over, and then you work bending over on the piece. It's very time consuming. But, but, then, when you, but then when you take it off at stretchers, stretch stretchers, that then doesn't it kind of collapse and, and uh, change the shape of the image? It's more like a scarf at that point. It can, yeah. It depends on how you mount it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah now in this case, you know, he basically, you know, just put two push pins in the corner, well, three across the top, and let it hang. Whoops. Yeah. Come back here. Um, and looks like it's stitched, at least on the right side that you just showed, let's see. to keep it from unraveling. Yeah, I guess I it was I either he stitched it or bought it that way. Yeah, I guess it's got a it's got a seam, or you know, a, an edge there that has been looks like yeah. Yeah. or so. So we'll I do guess that. all the way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that goes. But on. just to get that background, um, wow, that's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. I did um, just a 
oh gosh, I was it a dragon that took me, I think across two, maybe two and a half classes to finish. And it was about um, five feet long. Yeah. Now, when you're saying classes, you're not talking about individual classes. You're talking about class sessions, right? Like, yeah, yeah, with, like with uh, Helen eight, and, eight and trying to work on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, eight weeks each. Uh, yeah, Jenny, what's, what's going on? Oh, I'm not trying to raise my hand, but my iPad thinks I am. Oh, so. Okay. Well, you Sorry. told me that you were raising your hand. That's why I called it. <laughs> yeah. I see that. I, I see that because it tells me you're about to raise your hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, well, it's, 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 no, not, not. it's nice that it knows what you're going to do next, isn't it? Wow. You know? Yeah, it reads my mind, even right. though it can't tell what I'm thinking. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, just wait until they do actually have AI in, in kind of running. And it will be making decisions for us. Yeah. Um, it already is. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Yeah. Um, so here's a, here's a piece. Now, this is a, it's probably about, you know, five feet tall. And uh, it's an actual, you know, piece of wood. And this is bronze. Uh, oh. Let me zoom in on it a little. If I can just find my cursor. There we go. You know, and the bronze work is actually, you know, done really nicely. And you can kind of see, you know, a uh, outline of a face here. Everybody kind of see that? No, I, I, no, I don't see a face. The nose, the eye socket, the mouth, the chin. Oh, okay. Oh, Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank I you for it. pointing that out. I yeah, I do. Michelle. I see a big oh, seashell. Okay. I see it now. See a what? Seashell. A seashell. Okay. Right. Yeah. I see a seashell too, yes. So this is uh, I, uh, Carolina. Yeah. She's in uh, Asheville, Carolina. It's called Waves. And it's, um, you know, bronze and black walnut. Carolina Rojas. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, getting back to the piece itself. It's a nice piece of bronze, and then I don't know how many of you have worked uh, and done sculpture before. Um, bronze is kind of an interesting medium to work in uh, because this was done originally as a, a piece of wax and carved, and then they made a mold, and then they had to cast the bronze. Well, when you cast the bronze, the bronze all looks the same. Uh, and then from there, um, some artists do it themselves, but generally the foundry does it. Uh, the, the surface, the finish that they put on it is called a patination. And, and they've, they've done, you know, and used two different surfaces here. You know, two different finishing surfaces, you know, for the raised area and then the, the other area down below it. So, you know, that, that piece took a little bit of time, you know, to actually do. Um, now this is a very impressive piece. All right, you see the little name card over there? Well, the name cards were probably about, I'd say they were probably about eight inches wide and probably about eight inches, you know, six to eight inches tall. And this is a, a, a very large piece. This is a very large drill. Um, and when you begin to look at it, you know, very closely, it's, it's all graphite. Oh, wow. Nice. Oh, wow. And, uh, you know, it's really nicely drawn. Mm -hmm. Wow. Beautiful. But, uh, you know, just a lot of really, really nice, rendering and you know when i talk about laying down tones and not making it look scratchy yeah. that's kind of what i'm talking about okay um go back to the original photo and when you blow it up wow. you know you can get
you know, there, there's a lot of changes in value and texture and things like that, but, you know, really nicely handled. And yeah, the hair is beautiful. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the overall effect of this piece really sort of depends on the scale of it uh, because it is so large, you know, it's, uh, It really gets your attention in the room. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that's the most beautiful ear I have ever seen. <laughs> you know, and yeah. we talked about ear, so all of you should be able to tell me, you know, what all the different parts of a, that ear is, right? I remember Oracle. <clears throat> you remember what? Or Oracle. Oracle. A-U, Oracle. Am I saying that right? Yeah, A U R I C L E. Yeah, is is part of it called an oracle? No, I think that's part of the mouth or the lip. <laughs> <laughs> it was close. <laughs> yeah, that was a different class. Mm -hmm. Oh darn! I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll go look it up as we speak. Okay. All right. Yeah. Let me know. I, I, I thought that was, <laughs> I thought that was like the little puffy parts of the uh, lip down here. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, what are the parts? What are the parts of the ear? There we go. Uh, go back to the, um, yeah. It is called the oracle. What is? It's the earlobe. Is the oracle? Oh, the earlobe part down here is the oracle. Yes, a u r i c l e. What is this little piece right in here? It had starts with a T, right? Oh, I haven't found that yet, but I'll I'll look. <laughs> Yeah, because all of these. So is Bob still tangy? Yeah, because all of still have, doing work in graphite. I'm sorry, what? Is Bob <laughs> still doing work in graphite? Bob, um, yeah, I think he does from time to time. Bob, yes, sir. Are you doing work um, in graphite right now? Uh, well, a little bit. Uh, uh. Well, I, I did a colored pencil one that I'm not real happy with because uh, I don't like the colored pencils. They're the, they're the, the uh, Prisma uh, erase, uh, erasable colored pencils. Mm. And they seem to be all pretty waxy and you can't get a good clean edge, uh, with at least I can anyway. But then I backed it up with, with uh, charcoal and graphite. Uh, so anyway. Okay. I work in some. I remember Bob doing some really nice work in graphite. That's well, what makes you. me think. Yeah. All right. You found those ear parts yet there? Yeah. And it, <clears throat> on the second one that I looked at, it doesn't list that part of the earlobe as an oracle. It's got something else on it. So. Um, and what, is, what does it have? It's oh, a hold on. Uh, the computer I'm using is going wacko on me. I'll, ah. I'll come. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I've I've got them all listed. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, I'll, good. <laughs> I'll have to go back and yeah, we'll have to have that discussion again about ears. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so that's Franklin's work. Um, and then this lady was doing some really interesting work. Um. Mm -hmm. Now, this is basically what you would kind of consider an installation. Mm -hmm. And so it's a painting, but it's also a piece of sculpture to go with it. And, um, and it's, it's interesting, you know, the sculpture to me was not as interesting as the painting. And, uh, I agree. But how you see they are together? They are one in front of the other one or what? Well, yes, and it's the same artist who did both of them. And they relate to each other because if you look at the sculpture, and we'll go back to it in a minute, the sculpture, the, the leaves and things are in the painting as well. Okay. So this is, uh, you know, Catalina's work. And this is about the sculpture piece, okay? So it's cement in uh, clay paper or paper clay. Um, you know, to make the actual sculpture piece. But you see the little boy in his hand and he's holding the leaves. See, so the, the sculpture is 
sort of like a reflection of the painting. Okay. Now the painting style here is what is generally referred to as a deconstructive, a deconstructivist approach. So it's like, you know, you have kind of a traditional painting, but then you're taking things out of it, you know, or away from it. And, uh, you know, it seems to be, it seems to be like one of the new trends going on, you know. Is that like abstract realism or is it, it's, is there another it, name for that now? Well, it's <laughs> realism, but, it, it, but then they take it, you know, then they take the ink and they break it up, you know, or, or take things away from it. I don't, you know, I'm not that well versed in what they're trying to do. <laughs> I don't know that they're that well versed in what they're trying to do. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, because I have a friend in particular who's a very good representational artist and he's kind of experimenting with that too. It's like, why would you do that? <laughs> you know, you had a, you had a really nice painting there and then you went back over it and you kind of, you know, blocked in paint all over it. And what's the point? Yeah, it almost looks like there was tape across it and then somebody had, had pulled off the tape. Yeah. And that's what you have left. Yeah. Well, in this particular case, <laughs> you know, um, and if you begin, let me zoom in on it. Yeah, she's actually come back in and with a palette knife or something and then put in layers of paint over, mm. you know, o over the other layer, uh, over the painting itself. Um, I, t I tend to like that, but on the other hand, I'm not sure why I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, and I'll, well, it I'll, really, I'll it really looks cool. For attention. Yeah, I'll be I'll be on the opposite side of that and say I don't like it. I don't know exactly why I don't like it, but it kind of bothers me. <laughs> you know? So Charles, it's not so much that she took something away, she added something to it when she added the uh paint with the palette knife. Yeah. So it wasn't Put a, it wasn't like she put a piece of fabric or a paper towel on the wet paint and then pulled it off. She actually added more. Right. It's painted over. Yeah. yeah. Well, generally, I mean, kind of what they're doing is, is they're, they've got an image and then they're breaking that image up, you know, with these other layers of paint, you know, in front of it. And, you know, what the idea of doing that exactly is, you know. <laughs> But you can see the canvas in some of the lighter areas, yeah, which indicates a, maybe a scraping. Uh, what I do like about it is the perspective, mm -hmm. the way his shoulders and the way his arm is done with one arm in front of the other. I, the perspective is done really nicely. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the whole painting itself, I mean, if, if, if we, you know, don't pay attention to the overpainting, um, you know, the painting itself is actually very well done. And I think you're right, the sculpture doesn't add anything to the painting. It, <laughs> well, other than it's just, it's sort of a mirror or kind of a reflection to it. You know, again, it's, it's just a repeat, you know, of the boy's hands holding the leaves. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the way that they actually put it together in the museum is they put the sculpture directly in front of the painting. Mm. Oh, okay. You know, and it's by the same artist. Um, and, you know, they, they were obviously meant to be paired together in some way. So. Mm -hmm. Now is if, if we had not seen enough of that already, okay, there's, there's the card <laughs> on the painting itself. Um, And her yeah. statement about it, but then, but then there's this one, which is right next to the other, <laughs> and so it's it's like different views and different angles of this same boy and the same pose. Yeah, you know, so it's different interpretations. 
So do you think as a mother, she wants her child to be a botanist? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> you know, maybe. Possibility. Yeah. Um, you know, she's from Colombia, Medellin, um, Florence, Italy, studied fashion, did a lot of textual art, learned uh, multiculturalism in her everyday life, which moved her far gone. So she's a paisa. She's a what? A paisa. Oh, uh, Italian? Yeah. Well. No, paisa. The people from uh, that part of Colombia, they call them paisa. Okay. Is there a reason for that? that you no. And, I, and I, it's not offensive either. They are a middle of their pies. Okay. Right. Yeah. Is the root of that word, does the root of that word paisa mean fish or something about fish? Is it near the coast? No, uh, it's close to paisano. You know, mm -hmm. typical of that and so. Um, so her basic statement is, you know, I paint a lot of kids since I'm, you know, at a point in life, you know, as a mother where I'm interacting with children all the time, moved by my innate possibilities for a child. The artist believes children should start to build visions of themselves early. Okay. <laughs> you know, so what did that tell me about her work? Uh, not a lot. Okay. <laughs> all right. Um, so here's the, here's the other guy. Now remember the one piece that we looked at that had all the layers and stuff? Now this is in oil paint, the other was in acrylic. Okay. And now he's working, you know, in oil, but very much so the same way. Um, now, and I really like his work. Um, you know, the textures, the movement of it, and uh, just the layering of the color and the sort of feel of dimension, you know, in the piece is really nice. You know, and these are big, you know, these are a good five, six feet across. And then when you get in, you know, to the actual paint surface itself, there's a lot of stuff going on. And he's, you know, he's using direct paint you know, different, different types of applications of paint. He's also using airbrush. Oh. In there, you know. What's the, what's the title of this one? To me, it looks like, uh, like a trash can. Yeah, chromatic, <laughs> chromatic movement is the name of the piece. Chromatic movement. Yeah. And, uh, from Peru. Lopez, okay, he's from Lima, Peru. And, uh, hmm. but you know, I've seen, he was in the earlier show and I was really impressed with, with his pieces then. And, you know, he's, you know, I like what he's doing with the paint. You know, he's, he's really kind of playing with it. He's definitely got a feel and a style to his work that's unique and kind of interesting. So. Fun. Pardon? It is a fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Talking about being a child again. There you go. <laughs> right. So, uh, okay, moving on. Yeah. Now, this was a beautifully painted piece. Um, again, it's not real big, but it's probably like 20 by 30. You know, so it's, you know, fairly good size, but really nicely now, painted. Did they challenge the paint or a, a photo? It's a painting. Photorealism. It's very nice. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the actual, actual application of the paint, the technique and you know, use of color and rendering and stuff is really nicely done. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very soft. Mm -hmm. Child fates, yeah. the hands. Yeah. Who is the author for this one? Who's the artist? Okay, well, we'll get there. But, you know, if you look at the surface, the paint surface, and, <laughs> and then you contrast it, and I talk a lot about this, you know, you contrast the, the sort of soft, but representational, very tight rendering of the figure 
against this mm -hmm. very abstract kind of loose and open, you know, paint passages in the background. Um, and it makes a nice contrast. You know, the figure definitely, you know, sits forward and the, the background sits back very nicely. So it, it gives you a sense of depth in there. Here's a, I took a couple of close-up shots there. So you can kind of get a sense of how the paint was applied. And then here, here's the information on the artist. So Melvin Toledo, he's in uh, Tucker, Georgia. Nasli Princess of Manila. Hmm. And it's oil on aluminum panel. Hmm. So. All right. Anyway, anybody got any thoughts on that piece? Beautiful. I, I, nice. didn't, know, yeah. I didn't know you could paint on aluminum. Yeah, my comment, how do you paint on aluminum? Well, actually, uh, a lot of people are doing that now. They're, they're creating these aluminum panels um, and the way that they're finished they're it's got like a sanded texture on it. And so it actually takes paint pretty nicely. And there's, uh, you know, a lot of people using that now. And it comes in a cradle, kind of like the wood cradles that they, they make with a plywood surface. This one just is covered with aluminum. But, you know, they're becoming kind of popular. And, uh, you know, oil paint will stick to it. Now, if you're using acrylic, maybe not so much. Yeah. Definitely couldn't use watercolor on it. Um, <laughs> that would take some doing. Uh, yeah, I, I think you take a little more than some doing, you know, there's nothing, yeah, there's nothing for the watercolor to really hold on to. You can put it on and it would run off. <laughs> it would, yeah, it would beat right up and, you know, off it would go. Um, now, this, or these, there was an artist there who were doing these sculptures. Oh, how cool. Mm, nice. Paper? Paper sculpture? Well, Whoa. actually not. The clay? Actually, these are pieces of masking tape. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, my God. <laughs> that that's, is fun. That's to... crazy. Wow. Yeah, it's all weird. And, and the thing is, now these were fairly small, but she had some pieces that I'll show you in a while that were actually quite large. And it's all masking tape or different types of paper type tape. Um, and I found them really interesting, you know. Um, they were fun. So, acid free masking tape. Ooh, not cheap tape. No, no. Well, I mean, it would have been archival tape that they would have used you know, in a museum or frame shop or something like that. You know, you, you mm -hmm. can get that stuff pretty easily. Um, this, again, is masking tape. Oh, oh wow. Jeez. Yeah. She's got a lot of patience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like uh, an uh, underwater sea creature I've seen on my dives. Yeah, it, it yeah. You pick them up and you can look underneath. Yeah. Little animal. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, if you don't get stung. Yeah. Well, usually I dive with gloves. With gloves, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I thought those were really interesting. But again, those were fairly small. She had a bigger piece there that was really pretty impressive. So. Um, anyhow, so, uh, you know, this piece, it's a diptych, you know, two different canvases, you know, obviously, you know, painted across the scene. And, uh, you know, 
it didn't do a lot for me personally. You know, I wasn't like really wowed by it. This is uh, Marissa Servan, I guess. Let's see, School of Fine Arts. And she's from Uruguay. Um, okay, went to Argentina. She lived for 20 years. Uh, uh, she's in Atlanta now. Uh, Says so she understands the importance of the past. Okay. All right. Uh, now this is this is the name of the show. Okay, something to declare. And so you know, this oil. has got all the. Pardon? It was made with oil, acrylic, and rice. Yeah, yeah. She had like little pieces of rice stuck to the canvas. You know, when you uh, let's go back to the piece itself. You know, like these little pieces here. You know, they. You know, they added some texture on the surface. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so, you huh. know, the rice was actually embedded into, you know, the paint. Mm. Why? I don't know. Mm. Yeah. Gave a lot of texture to it, I'm quite sure. Uh-huh. Yeah. Texture makes things oh, interesting. That. Okay, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it could, yeah. you know. I mean, for me. Mm, what do yeah. I mean by the acrylic and rice? Yeah, yeah. Oh, see, she put rice, the green she rice. rice on it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that glued it on the paint. Yeah, but the thing is, she put the rice on after the paint. Yeah, uh-huh. You know, because this is this is adhered with like some kind of clear matte medium or something on it. There's no actual paint or color over the rice itself. So you mean this is brown rice or what? Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. Had, yeah I think she had a combination of like a, a brown rice and a white rice. Yeah. I mean, she could have painted them those colors. Too. Maybe, yeah. I mean, maybe she did. Yeah, because some of it matched the background paint that she's got underneath them. Yeah, it seems to. I but you know, in looking at these, I mean, they look like little black pieces of rice, hmm. and they didn't really look painted. You know, it looked like it, they actually came in that color. Oh, maybe wild rice is it's yeah very dark yeah. brown yeah. black yeah yeah. Right. yeah. I buy a, I buy a wild rice mixture that looks a lot like that. Mm -hmm. It's got a little black rice, brown rice. Yeah. You know. Variety. Yeah. Light brown rice. <laughs> yeah, I usually do that around around Thanksgiving too, but I've never thought about putting it on anything. <laughs> on, on your okay. Right. Well, and then this this was the piece that took up the most space in the whole show, and it's right in the front gallery. And uh, I never did quite figure this one out, okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks like one of those deflated, you know, it looks like one of those deflated people at the car, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, the dealerships, right. it's deflated. Yep. yep. <laughs> yep. It looks kind of like the pink panther. Yeah, thank, thank you, lady, for demonstrating that, you know, the whole thing. Anytime. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> you do that again just in case other people missed it. <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it down. You got the moves. Okay. Thanks. Um yeah. So anyway, here's the write up on the on the piece itself. Uh, this you know. must be symbolic of something. Okay. Yeah. The, the dilemma. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's uh, a thrift thrift house linens, uh, rope, brick, mirror, and poly fiber. Um, yeah. Yep. So. Empathy action yep. change. Huh? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, personally, mm, yeah, I didn't get any of that from it. It's just well, she's named it after a woman. Maybe the dilemma is referring to 
a person that is a problem in her life. Hmm. Or, you know, maybe this person is, you know, having a problem. I don't know, you know. Yeah. Maybe this person is exhausted. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. You know, a woman's work is never done, so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, see? Yeah, there's so much to it. You can yeah, read yeah, so much. There is, yeah. yeah, you know, you get a group of people together and everybody sees it slightly mm -hmm. differently, you know? Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we know it's a woman, though. That's, you know, Rachel. Yeah. So. And it looks like she's a, a, she's got ballet slippers on, the uh, pointed ones. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Shoes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then she's got, like, her back is broken. Yeah, she's with that brick, brick hanging from, from it. For those additional four pieces, yeah. it's not for what that means. That's the thing. Yeah, that's that's a good question. You know, <laughs> you know I didn't I didn't want to go down that road. Yeah, but yeah, I mean it looks figurative in a way, but you know, yeah. But what? And there's what is that like really a open? glass thing in front of that. They yeah, there's a round there. There's a glass underneath. Right. Yeah. There's yeah. a round mirror. Or she that, moves. She might break the glass. Uh, that's her dilemma. I don't well, know. as you're walking around the piece, mm -hmm. you know, you end up getting like a reflection. You know, you you actually see the piece reflected in it, and notice that okay. you know she's got this rope with the two bricks yeah. mm -hmm. that are around her waist and kind of pulling her down or pulling it mm -hmm. down. Um. Okay, Again, she's trying to keep it from falling and destroying the mirror. Mm. Uh, I don't know. You say everybody can get their own idea about, about this one. Very strange. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How? At first, how I did... thought it was a cow because it looked like it had, you know, tits, <laughs> had tits hanging down. That's why I thought, you know. Yep. Then when you there say you the ballet go. thing, I said, okay, all right, that's not that what it is. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, you know, yeah, Armando, yeah, was kind of like, I mean, they do, they look like, are they udders, are they breasts, or are they, what are they, you know? It's like, and, and she has no hands. No hands. Uh, well, she's got gloves on. The, the gloves ones on. On, the, on the front yeah. left are hands, and yeah. the ones on the front back are feet. Yeah. What that yeah. stuff is, is in the middle, I don't know. <laughs> they aren't really looking like hands or looking no. like boobs yeah got, I mean, she's got mittens on yeah yeah it's again yeah different people see different things <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean this could be an arm and a hand these could be legs and feet you know this could be a head okay you know who knows so anyway um, here's another painting by the artist who did the black and white piece. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. This one I like better. Yeah, it's got more movement and color in it than the other piece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the color was really subtle in the in the other one, and it's it's actually pretty subtle in this in a lot of areas. There's there's a lot more color in there than you might first suspect. Here's a close-up. And so a lot of what you read is sort of a neutral <clears throat> gray is actually, you know, a color, either a violet, green. Uh, but yeah, again, lots of lots of things, lots of layers, lots of things going on in there. Is that Mario Benalta? Uh, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Mario. Yeah, Reggio Peralta. Yeah. No more. Oh. Hmm. Mario Rizzo. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a nice piece. I mean, and again, you know, it's fairly large. It's it's not a small piece. Yeah. Um, for those of you who like drawing. Here, here's another piece by the same person. I think it was a woman, or was it a man? Yeah, let's see. Yeah, this one. 
No, Franklin. Okay, yeah, so it's a man. Okay. Yeah, so he did this piece. And again, <clears throat> now this is a triptych. This is three, three separate frames hung together to create the one image. So it's called a How big was this? Probably about six or eight feet long. Okay. You know, it was over life size. I mean, it's, you know, it's a big piece. Um, you know, and again, it's, it's like the, uh, you know, the actual rendering is very soft. Mm -hmm. Was it is it gra graphite or was it painted? It's graphite. Is it okay? Yeah, it's all it's all drawing. Oh, nice soft. <laughs> wow, that's that's great. Beautiful. Little piggy went to market. Little piggy stayed home. <laughs> <laughs> really nice. Are those clouds on her back? That's what yep. it looks like. Uh, actually, I don't think that that was in the painting. I think that's a reflection of something that was oh. in the front. Oh. Yeah. On the glass? On the glass that it was okay. on. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that that light part right there was not part of the image, I don't think. Uh, yeah, it was, it was across the studio, <laughs> across the way from it. But you know, Reflection. yeah, really, really nicely done. So. Is that a person standing there? Um, it may be. I think yeah. that's, that's reflection too. Yeah, the reflection. Yeah, reflection. Yeah, reflection yeah. in the glass. You know. So. Oh, okay, that's just just blew my mind. Yeah, no, <laughs> was, that, yeah, that was not the, part of the drawing. It was, okay. it was, was the back of the hand that light? Maybe or it was See. Was the back of the hand right here? Right. That was that that bright? Was it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it seems to be contradictory to the rest of it because everything is soft and that that hard edge around the knuckles and a hard edge around the arm. Yeah. Uh, seems to be disconnected with the with the. Seems to me that ought to be softer, but that's me. <laughs> yeah. Well, squint your eye, dude. And you can see, you know, there's definitely a value for the forearm moving back in the way. Right. More in right. Shape, it does. Kind of the lighter area, and then the fingers are back in shadow again, except for the end of the nails. So. And then and the, the ring. Yeah, and the indication of the light and where it's coming from, it seems to be coming from the left, you know, hitting the shoulder. The, the knuckles and the, you know, the upper plane of the hand. Right. Are, you know, different planes in the hair that are sort of turned toward the light. So. Yeah. But at least it's consistent. Nice drawing. Yeah. And the same thing, you know, like here, you know, in the hip area. Again, you know, because this is moving away from you, you know, it's, it's somewhat in mid-tone to shadow and then once you hit the waist and the hips start moving the other direction there's not a lot there because again you know it's it's catching a lot of light and then you don't really start getting into mid-tone shadow till you get the legs moving away from you again so but it's yeah you know really nice drawing really beautiful um and then you know, we've seen this lady's work before. And again, this is a really, really nice piece. Now this is a, I think this is a little bit larger than the other piece that we looked at. And again, it's same process, same technique. So she's layering the fabric. Um, it's kind of like you, you lose and find, you know, pieces of the drawing, you know, in the painting itself. Let me see. And this is, uh, yeah, Dora Lopez. And we had a lot. Pardon? They had a lot of new artists. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we're not even halfway through the show. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, we've got lots and lots of stuff still yet to look at. I'm going to have to start moving a little bit faster. But, uh, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it was so relaxing, Charles. We can finish Friday. What was so relaxing? It just feels like we're walking through. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're with in our group. And we're making comments, and you're educating us. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> we are moving at an ambling pace. <laughs> ambling along. I like ambling. the amble. Yeah. But, you know, I, I didn't really want to rush through the work, because it, it really deserves, you know, your time of really looking at, because yeah. they're all really nice pieces. And I would encourage anybody, if you can get down to the Codmere Museum, uh, I would definitely go to actually see. When's the last day? Uh, when is the last day? Yeah. Uh, I think it's sometime in March is when the show ends. Uh, it, okay. It, it, it just opened the first of the year. But if you're not a member, it's a, it's a $5 fee for a senior. Um, mm -hmm. They're pretty much so open. <laughs> I think Tuesday through Saturday, and then there are Sundays as well, but you know, just a couple of hours. Um, the nice thing about it is that it's, you know, it's a very small local museum. Um, for the most part, if you go there, I mean, I was there for two and a half hours, maybe three hours. So mm -hmm. there were four people in the whole building. <laughs> You know, oh, what's it the was name eight, of the museum? Yeah, it was me and the lady at the front desk. You know, when you come in, pay your money. And then there were two two young women who were kind of going through the show. They were there probably all of about 35 minutes to 45 minutes and they were gone. So it's like I had the whole place to myself. Um, what was the name of the museum or the art gallery? It's called Cobb Marietta Museum. And it's, oh, it's right off of Marietta Square on Atlanta Road. Oh, yes. Yes, I know what I bet. Yeah. And to be they have their own off-street parking, so you don't have to yeah, pay. I've been right. there a lot, yeah. And it, it's a fabulous little museum. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I saw the, the other show of uh, Latinx artists, and it was wonderful stuff. So. Yeah, I, you know. Actually, the curator, um, who's Maddie Beth, uh, you know, she used to model for us, you know, when she was a college student going to Kennesaw. Um, huh. Yeah, but since... I have, I, yeah, I have, have drawn her and yeah, all kinds has. of things. Yeah, well, she's the curator there now. And she's doing a fabulous yeah. job. You know, really, really you know, great job. Um, so this is the same woman who did The Little Boy. Right, several paintings of the little boy. So, uh, here's, you know, the artist that was doing the, you know, money pieces. Uh, her name was uh, Maria Fernanda. I, you know, Lyra. 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 Yeah. From Caracas, Venezuela. Again, you know, now, now she's doing, you know, the U.S., you know, hundred dollar bill. You don't see those around very often. You know, they, they're almost like out of circulation. Charles? Yeah? Is that, is that method of putting color on a piece of plastic a difficult thing to well, do? It's, it's actually printed like on a large format inkjet printer. But you've got to have a like a big industrial bed inkjet printer that you can run that you know that width of plexiglass through. So this is not anything you can do at your own house. You know, you'd have to right. actually have it done commercially. Um, but again, you know, her part of the artwork is really doing the doing the image. And again, you know, this is printed, but it's printed on the back side of that plexiglass. So, 
Uh, it's interesting with the Day of the Dead figures in there. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, here we come back to this one again. So that that lady's first one that we saw mm -hmm. was enormous compared to this one. No, no, no. These are both about the same size. Oh, mm. really? So that's six feet long? Oh yeah, yeah. These are at least at least six feet, maybe longer. That's incredible. Yeah. No, no. These are very big pieces. Um, you know, here's the same guy doing the scarf. Yeah. Personally, I kind of like the other one better. Did he say who this person was? Yeah, this is same. You know, same guy doing the star. You know, oh, no, the, the, the in the picture. Uh, it's a self-portrait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I like the piece that he did of Obama better. Yes. Um. Now this is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see who this artist is. This is Frank de las Mercedes. Okay. They will be free. Frank de las Mercedes. Yeah. And I like I like the style of this. It almost looks like uh, mosaic. You know, because of the hard edges and stuff like that. But it's painted. You know, it's Reminds me of Pennsylvania Dutch distal think. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. You know, I've seen a lot what, of what is Mexican it? and South American tile work that looks <laughs> like that as well. Something about the. Can you go back to the thing about him? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a acrylic and uh, ink blot on canvas paper. Spiritual and development. So the same way. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They will be free. Pardon? They will be free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, not by now. Pardon? No nothing. No nothing? All right. Well, so we don't right. know where he came from. Uh, Nicaragua, I believe. It's on his think? painting. It's on his painting. Yeah. Well, yeah, his painting was about Nicaragua. You know, freeing uh, Nicaragua. When it said ink black, can we look at what he's showing as the ink? Oh, I see. I'm not, you know, I, I'm wondering, you know, whether it's, it's like he put ink over this and then lifted it out, you know, to kind of bring out some of the texture of, of the paint. Maybe. Could be. Can't be sure. <laughs> Reminds me of Freebird, the song. Okay. Only the birds can escape. <laughs> it's interesting. I like this. Uh huh. That must be a reflection because I saw a, a person is facing one of those leaves. <laughs> Pull out a little bit. Keep going down. Yeah, right here. See right there? Yeah. Um, no, go I down see, more. Maybe that's a reflection, you think? Yeah. Closer actually, to the bird. There you go. Yeah, right actually, there. Actually, I don't think it is. Actually, that maybe is a piece that's collaged in there or something. Oh, okay. That was a good catch, Wanda. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. Well, I hadn't, I hadn't actually noticed that, but well, you know, I make sure I wasn't seeing. You know, anything. actually, <laughs> actually, I can tell you what it is because we're gonna. It's the painting that's directly across from the other side of it. Oh, oh okay. okay. <laughs> right. 
reflection but, of another painting. Yeah, but the interesting thing is that this piece, I don't believe it was under glass. So there's some. I don't believe it was what? It's not under Shiny glass. there. Yeah. yeah so, so there's. It's there's, reflective. Yeah, so there's something really highly reflective there. Because the piece itself, as I remember, was not under glass. Mm. So, okay. so I wouldn't expect it to be reflecting something that's across on the other side of the gallery from it. Mm -hmm. But it seems to be. Hmm. It's kind of interesting now. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we'll look at that painting in just a little while. Because <laughs> it's yeah, mm -hmm. right across the way. Um, yeah, anyway. So there's this piece. And again, this is uh, the same guy who did the kind of battle scene that was a bit surreal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. so when did you attain sainthood? <laughs> <laughs> evidently, evidently Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I hadn't noticed, but okay. Um, then there's this piece. And uh, I have to honestly tell you, I really like this piece. <laughs> You know, it is this a photograph. No, no, yes. no this is a baby movie. bottle in his hand. <laughs> it is a baby I bottle. like this piece. Yeah, but it's real a, men, real men, real men feed their children. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it, it's it's something about sort of the attitude, you know, and and just the color and the contrast. You know, it's red, white, and black, but. Yeah, and then the fact. And what's the title of? Pardon? What is the title of this piece? Okay, well, let's go find out. You know, well, actually, we need to. You know, before we get there, you know, I kind of wanted to zoom in, and just let you kind okay. of look at how how they applied the paint. It's really mm. well done. This is a really nicely painted piece. You know, I mean, and I use nice handling of the modeling and the skin tones, you know, again, what, contrast between a textural background and, and kind of a more finished, yeah. you know, figure. Yeah, Armando, you got a question? Well, he's holding a baby bottle. I mean, yeah. what I mean? Well, let's go find out, okay? I saw a movie that they had, uh, somebody was having a party, and they had all these small baby bottles full of alcohol, different <clears> types <throat> of, of mixed drinks. Okay. And they were drinking from those baby yeah. bottles, which I thought was oh, weird. No. weird. Yeah. Well, now, <laughs> you know, now, yeah, this guy's name is Melvin Toledo. Again, he's painting oil on a little. Melvin Toledo. Mm -hmm. Oh, from yeah. Tucker, Georgia. Yeah, he's, he's living over in Tucker. Yeah, and the title of the painting is Joel, right? And uh, so let's see, Nicaragua, his interest to in high school drawing. Dragon Ball Z. Cartoon, Dragon Ball. Lithographic ink. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, it it doesn't really give you any explanation about what the painting is about itself. But again, you know, um, it's the technique and you know, it's, it's really nicely painted. It's a very natural look on his face. It's a... Uh -huh. so. Charles, I have a question about the, uh, the highlights on his forehead. And then the, the lighter part of the red above his head. Well, did that's, the art, yeah, that's did the artist do, do that to make it into a highlight? No, that, <laughs> that's actually the paint reflecting the lights in the museum. What? That's, oh. actually, that's actually like a hot spot on the painting from the lights in the museum. That oh, are okay. On. Thank you. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, an artifact. Yeah, 
that's that's not actually in the painting itself. You know, it's just that the lighting, you know, they've got spotlights on these. And so, okay. so at the top of the painting, if you've got a real textural um, oil painting and it's got a varnish on it, it, it picks up, you know, highlights in it. And you see the texture of it. So, so no, that's not actually painted into the painting itself. It's, All right, uh, let's see. So then we got, uh, now this was a fascinating piece to me, okay? Yeah, not about the subject matter. You know, it's, wow. it's more about the technique. Now this, again, this is a large piece of work. You know, again, it's probably eight feet wide. Amazing. But, you know, you begin to look at you know, the, the actual construction of the painting. So, you know, you got this map and then you got this figure of a soldier, right? It's all straw, but it's, I mean, it, this is all painted, okay? Oh my goodness, oh, yeah. look at that detail. Wow. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, because I mean, wow. think about this, okay? So you're painting a piece of straw. Wow. And the thing That's is, amazing. you know, you're not just putting, you know, you got a dark background and you're putting this lighter kind of yellowish paint over it to make a strand of straw, right, that's woven somehow. But you can't just, you know, it's, it's not just a straight paint stroke. You know, you got to break it, you got to pick it back up again, you got to go, across, you know, the cross pieces. And then you got to come back in sometimes two or three different you know, different value and color mixtures to get a mm -hmm. highlight on it, you know, shadow side on it. You know, I mean, this was, you know, literally painstaking, <laughs> um, yes. to, you know, to do. You know, just the change in value of this piece, mm -hmm. you know, kind of hanging out there. And I mean, this whole, and again, think about the scale of this thing. It's good size. This, you know, took a huge amount of effort to do. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not saying anything about, you know, the, the concept behind it or, you know, anything like that. It's just, just technically, to try to accomplish a painting like that, that's an absolutely huge amount of time. You know, I, I wonder if there was any significance to the basic using of uh, making him out of straw. Yeah, I don't, you know, again, you know, it's, it's part of a series and it's called Brain Brainwash, yeah. a straw man. Straw man, a uh, straw man. I'm looking up the definition of straw man. It's used it's in a, an it's argument. Just, it's, it's used in an argument. It's a weak argument. Mm -hmm. They say that's it's one a of the definitions. Yeah. War yeah. is a weak argument. Right. But now, <laughs> you know? but now the title of this piece has nothing to do with straw man. It's it's called I see. Brainwash. Well, the series is brainwash. He's got several paintings in there. Oh, okay. And they're I see all you. part of the same series. This particular piece is called I See You. And it's kind of like maybe he's a sniper or something like that. Is is there more of his series there? Yes. Yeah. We'll look at uh, at least one Good. other piece. Yeah. So, um, you know, we've seen this guy's work before, right? Where, where it, did the uh, grow up or do we have any information on that? No, it didn't really tell us, you know. He just lives in Atlanta, Georgia. So, yeah, not Yeah, not I didn't know if maybe he had experienced war. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah, here's a, you know, the second piece of you know, this gentleman that I, I, you know, and again, you know, I've, 
I like his work. Uh, I like what he's doing with the paint surface. Um, and again, you know, these are, you know, fairly good sized pieces. Uh, but really nice texture and use of color and changes of surface. You know, you keep looking at these and you just kind of see more stuff in it. But we're going to move on because we have lots more work still yet to do. We have a whole nother gallery. Yeah. Now we've, uh, we've seen this lady's work. And again, this is mm -hmm. okay. yeah. nicely done. Yeah, really nicely done piece. Uh, but yeah, Carolina Ross. Uh, there's this piece, which yeah, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, not quite really getting the message, you know, of what they're trying to accomplish here. You know, it's a nice painting, you know, again, it's one of these pieces, the more you look at, you know, the more you see things kind of come out of the background, you know, the butterflies, the other figure, the bird, you know, it's all kind of symbolic. Yeah, and the cross on the hat with the shovel and the pick. Queen Charlotte. That's good. <laughs> so. okay, the queen was part European, part African. Luis Avila. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gabriel Garcia. Macondo, that's not like Colombian. Oh, yeah, it's Mark. What are you saying? I think he is Colombian because he used that expression Macondo is on the Gabriel Garcia Marquez novel. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 100 Years of Solitude is a famous book. Yes. Uh -huh. Isn't there the name, the name of the town? Macondo. Somebody tried to read it. Is that what we're, somebody wow. just said? I have not read it yet, but it is a famous book. Yeah. So I guess Maybe it's I sort of representing the story. Um, then there are these three pieces, okay? All by the same artist. Um, these are probably about three feet across, three, four feet across, and there's three of them. And they're, they're sitting next to each other. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they're nicely done, you know, nice. And sort of having the three of them there together, they kind of work together you know, as, a, as a complete piece. And then um, somebody pointed out that there was a face in one of the paintings, and it was the face <laughs> of this, this painting yeah. right here that was being reflected okay. here. This is the one that's yeah. right across from it in the gallery. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I like the feel of it and kind of the symbology of it. Colors and... Yeah. The designs. Mm -hmm. And the painting, you know, the actual application of the paint is really put nice. Like that, put that yeah, paint back, please. Put it back. And uh, I think that refers to the the whole paint. You see uh, the, the lady with the apple at the snake. That refer to uh, Eva in the, uh, in the first book of the... Uh, <laughs> The Bible, what is the name of the first book? Uh, Genesis. 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 Yes. Garden of Eden. That's what creation. You're you know, when the 
when the snake to eat, how you come out? Don't worry, eat that apple, you will see it. Right. Well, yeah, eat that GMO apple, is what it's saying. She's turning it around. Right. Yeah, this time you eat the fruit, my snaky friend. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is interesting. I would have thought that would have been some uh, a lady, you know, female artist, instead of it's a man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, interesting piece. I like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, we've seen this artist before. He did the piece on uh, Nicaragua. You know, very similar technique. Uh, here's the other piece in the series that you had asked about. And again, you know, same, same basic approach. Hmm. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yep. How interesting. Look at the yep. map on the background, what it says. It says it, Buckhead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mining. Mining. Yeah. Yeah. It's a local map. Right. Yep. And, then, and then the uh, sort of automatic weapon is actually kind of a chandelier. Yeah. Mm. So exactly Could what you're trying to get out there, you know. Could you do a close up of the lights of the chandelier? I did not. Oh. I think this she's looks like we're going to have to have a museum tour. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, well, this is this is inspirational, you know. It's just like it was. Yeah, it gives you a good excuse to get out of your house and, and actually go somewhere. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry, buddy. I have a class. I got to get going. Okay, I'll see you all tomorrow. Yeah. Bye bye. Well, this was very, this was very nice, Charles. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. So you got you got to basically yeah. see about two-thirds of the show yeah. All right. so, so i guess we have a special idea. request before you leave charles if we could go back to the obama i just want to grab a quick screenshot of that and shoot it off to helen get her thoughts on it okay um i guess what i was going to say is uh Oh, if you uh, you know, if you're so inclined, I mean, you know, we can we can look through the rest of these, you know, on like Monday or something like that. If you want to see the rest, yeah, I would like that. Uh, and we have the whole still live show to go as well. So you have to go back. back, 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 back. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, it is. There's part of it. Oops. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can. Like that? Uh -huh. I think it was further. You had one shot of it where you were further back. Yeah, I can. I can. That's Obama. There. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Perfect. That's what I want. And let me drop it into something so I can save it. And then I need the um, artist's name as well. Thank you. All right. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, thank you all for going on. And um, now, lady, before we go away, um, you had a question about watercolor you wanted to ask? Yeah, I don't see many of the uh, watercolor artists here today. I was just interested in, you know, the types of paints and brushes that the people who work mostly in watercolor, what did they use? Yeah. And did you get my email response? Yes, I did. I did. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, um, tomorrow is a is Thursday, so we share stuff on that day. You know, John okay. will probably be around. Yeah. Um, and Naomi and Jean, those were the three people I remember really yeah. great work in watercolor. Yeah. Yeah, we, ha we haven't seen much of Jean lately. You know, she's kind of uh -huh. in and out. 
uh, she was having some issues with the computer. Okay. And I would imagine at this point, you know, she's, you know, probably without a computer, you know, until she gets yeah. um, And Naomi shows up every once in a while, but yeah, we, we don't get to talk to her often. Um, okay. Oh. She's listening. What is she doing? Sewing? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, John would be, you know, a good source for that. And I yes, know, most definitely. And I'd be happy to show you those Sakura, you know, that little set that I have. Uh, okay. I've, I've, got, I've got Windsor Newton as well, too. You know, there's, you, you've got a lot of different choices. It just depends on how you want to work. You know, if you're working okay. exclusively in the studio, then, you know, the Windsor Newtons and some kind of tray or something like that would be fine. If you're going to be traveling. This little tray is, I don't know if you can see it or not. Maybe I need to shoot a picture of it and I'll shoot it to you. Yeah. This is what Rick uh, would use a lot of times. And he was teaching some watercolor to right. seniors. Yeah. And you can take, you can take, uh, if you have paint in the tubes, you can get a little plastic case like that. You can actually put your watercolor in it, leave it in it, and and work out of it. You know, as a it's kind of like a traveling set as well. Right. I think that's what he had intended, and he would take it on some of his trips, especially when he was in upstate New York. Right. Yeah. Now the nice thing about traveling, you know, if you're going to travel with paint these days, watercolor uh, is one of those things because it comes in a plastic case, not a metal um that you can get on and off a plane pretty easily with brushes and things if you try to do that with oil paint or anything else in a tube they're not gonna let you get it yeah they're gonna confiscate it. so yeah um you know if you want to paint with oils or acrylics and you're going to a location you need to mail that ahead of the time that you're going to be there you know so you can pick it up when you're there so you'll have supplies and then to get it back, you got to mail it back <laughs> because they won't. Charles, even even if you try to put it on as check luggage, they'll confiscate your oil. You cannot you cannot have a sealed container of oh. paint uh, in a tube or any kind of thinner or anything like that on an airplane. Pure I did not know that. Wow! Wow! Pure huh. mid. Yes, they won't. yeah, yeah, because the volatile nature of oil yeah, paint. Well, right, yeah, yeah. There's the volatility of it, but they're also, you know, it's a security concern. Yeah, it might have explosives in it. That's right. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're a crazy artist. You know, you've uh, heard of the, of the artist bombers. That's right. <laughs> maybe, maybe you can drip out that linseed oil and set it yeah. on fire. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> tell maybe yeah. So tomorrow you play is the uh, the share uh -huh. the critique portion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So if you just send me an email with anything you want to talk about, that's fine. You know. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. I was going to end it with the fact that you know if you got out of plane with tubes of paint readily available, you might be throwing them out the window at the Pentagon or something like that. But. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Charles. I had no idea that that was considered contraband. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. But it certainly does make life complicated to have to mail it ahead and then mail it home for heaven's sake. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Wow. And that's when you put your wells of watercolor together and a little plastic hold up case. You can very yeah. put it in a backpack or well, yeah. just yeah. make sure it's dry. Yeah. <laughs> make, that's one of the advantages of being a watercolorist, then. Right. That's phenomenal. Yeah, oh, yes. not in a tube. Although I... Yeah, and, and you don't want to put it in a metal pan because as you're going through the little things that will set everything off. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, just a little plastic case. And, you know, it's, it's water-based paint, so, you know, it's not uh, deemed as being dangerous, okay? Um, <laughs> but do not, do not put a pellet knife in right. your pan. Right, right. Yeah, they will view that as a possible weapon. Weapon, right. <laughs> Stabber. Yeah. 
So yeah. Even though, I, I have one more question. Yeah. Um, when it comes to the, the brushes, for example, mm -hmm. uh, synthetic uh, versus what it is it animal hair brushes? Yeah, the natural hair brushes. You yeah. know, personally, you know, I mean, I use both. Um, you know, the natural hair brushes are oftentimes very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. They make really good synthetic brushes these days uh, that I think are, you know, just about as good as any animal hair brush. So you really don't need to go out and spend like $35, $40 on a brush, you know, for watercolor. It's just, you know. Water, water painting and watercolors, um, that's what I wanted to start doing first when I started doing the painting. Mm -hmm. And it seems so uh, relaxing and calming uh, compared to oil or acrylic. Yeah. You know, it just seems more meditative to me, so. Isn't that interesting, huh? Well, I mean, you can do all, you know, I mean, water can, color can be anything. I mean, it can be tight, photoreal, it can be very loose and expressive. Um, it's a great medium to work in. Uh, but like I had suggested in my email, the, the thing that's going to make all the difference in the world in watercolor is not the paint. It's really... It's the paper. paper. Yeah. That's the paint. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. If, you, if you get in a low grade, cheap student grade paper, depending on how you work, if you, if you wanna work really wet and really loose, the paper is gonna just wrinkle up and fall apart on you, okay? Yeah. If you work real the paper dry. paper is everything. Yeah. yeah, you know, if you work real dry, kind of a dry brush technique, it'll, mm -hmm. it'll okay. But it, there's a, a YouTube artist that's really uh, inspiring. His name is uh, Coco B, B E E, okay. um, and his work is just is so beautiful. You know, it's all of course it's all abstract. Well, most of it is abstract, and it's all watercolors. And it's just you know, it's really, really made me stop and say, I really, really want to do watercolors. Okay. You know, lady, whatever you do, don't use an aluminum canvas. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah. Well, you can, but yeah. it'll just be dripping down. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate everybody's input. Thanks, Charles. Okay. So, uh, yes, I'll definitely um, want to see the class tomorrow with you know the work because I always admire everybody's work. They do such good work, and I'll send some stuff in too. Okay. Yeah, we'd love to see it. Okay. Anyway, yeah. thank you all for coming. And uh, have a good lunch. Good rest of the day. Yes. Okay. You too. Right. Thank you. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye.